to God in the highest. Amen. God is good. Thank the Lord for his love and his kindness, his tender mercy, and his saving grace. Uh, grace and peace unto you. My name is Ronald G. Hairston, Sr. Uh, the name of our ministry is uh, Kingdom Faith International Christian Centers, where we're providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. So if you're part of the broadcast today, want to thank you. All the members of KFICC want to say hello to you today and thank God. I hope you're staying safe with you and the family and all those who are partnering with us. We do appreciate you being a part of our uh, broadcast this morning. As you know, we're, we're learning how to receive the word of God and apply it to our lives and even get to the place where we can benefit from the word that we're actually living by. So we're just excited about who God is, what he's doing. And don't forget, the day is Sunday, but it's a day that we've never seen before. And I'm just thankful and hopeful that you're a part of this broadcast this morning so we can encourage you with a word of faith, amen, out of the Bible, amen, that gives us, amen, instructions on how to position ourselves in terms of where we need to do, what we need to do, and how we need to do it, and even the way we need to get things done. So again, I, I'm excited. And the reason I'm excited because uh, Jesus is still on the throne. Uh, his word is still prophetically spoken to us if we believe it and receive it and walk in it. Amen. There's great things that he would do for us. So I hope you uh, are enjoying the broadcast. I hope you've been blessed. I hope that also that you've been studying the word uh, to better your life uh, in terms of how to position yourself during this time that we're in. Because uh, the Bible is true when it says uh, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. And that faith is having the intellectual knowledge of God's word. And uh, some things are just worth repeating because sometimes we forget and we we can't afford to forget uh, what God has done for us, what he's doing for us now and what he's yet going to do for us. Not only me and my household, but your household and our love, lovely uh, our, our family and our loved ones. Uh, and uh, That's important for us to, to keep and keep keep minds, keep our minds wrapped around that. So, again, uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity at this time. I want you to get your Bibles or your electronic devices. Uh, or if not, uh, whatever you use, I'm not sure whether you have a hard copy or it's uh, on the phone, but whatever you need, you want to make sure you get your Bible and also get your uh, uh, footnotes, whatever you want to keep your footnotes on your tablet or whether you do a hard copy, whatever it is that you do. We don't want to give you time to get that even now because we're going to be exploring the word of God this morning. Because as Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So again, I want to thank God for all of you, I want to remind you guys, don't forget uh, to uh, keep up your offerings. Amen. We do need your financial support, even though we're not in a building right now. We still have budget and things of that things. If things of that nature, we still have obligations that still have to meet financially. So we do remember that everything that we receive is through donations. So if you uh, if you could just take the time to do that, either during the broadcast or after the broadcast, that would be very much appreciated. And even those who are partnered with us want to thank you for sowing seeds, your financial seeds into the ministry. Everything is being accounted and taken care of. There's no fraud. There's no theft. Uh, we just do things upright. So we just want you to know that. So again, if you take the time to go to www.kficc.com and then what you can do is find a donate button and you can give that way. So uh, we may have some things to hashtag also in your comment section that you can give before the end of the message you can give also. So again, I'm ready. I hope you're ready. We're going to pray right now and get right into the word of faith so it can build us up and keep us encouraged in the things of God. So Father, we want to thank you and give you praise for those who are part of the broadcast. We ask you in Jesus' name that you begin to uh, bless those who are listening, uh, even those, Father, uh, who are partnering with us and even those for the first time. Uh, that you bless them in such a way that you give us ears to hear and hearts to obey. Let this word be a word that will encourage and build up our spirit, man, especially when we're walking by faith and not by sight. And Lord, we bind the enemy and all his devices. We declare that Jesus is Lord. We welcome the ministry of the Holy Spirit to take this vessel of clay and take this lesson and cause it to be amplified and also empowering your people this day. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody should say amen. Praise God. All right, let's go, if you would, please. We want to go to uh, the book of Ephesians. We'll go to the book of Ephesians. That's where we're going to be coming out of. Paul is writing to the church uh, at Ephesus, and the word church means ecclesia in the Greek, called out once. So he's writing to a group of believers, 
And this word is too, still prominent for us today. And it's a blessing for us if we understand that the word of God is not just designed for those who are old, but this is a New Testament uh, writing. Amen. So this is important for us to read. So Ephesians chapter number one is what we're going to go to and going to read Ephesians one through three. And today uh, what we're going to be talking about is because uh, uh, Jesus uh, has given us spiritual blessings. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Jesus has given us spiritual blessings. We're going to see what the Word of God says about that. I remember last week we were talking about Jesus, the life giver. Uh, that was a good good message uh, because it reminds us, and we need to be reminded, and this is a statement that I often use, is that we the, the struggle that we have sometimes as a body of believers is that we, we have lost our identity or we're taking on an identity that doesn't match the word of God. So our identity has to deal with who do, who, do, who does God say we are in, in reference to what we have received and what God has desired to do for us. So I want to kind of encourage you, if you would, uh, to keep that in mind. So we're going to go actually right, like I said before, Ephesians chapter number one, verses one through three. And today uh, we're talking about Jesus uh, has given us spiritual blessings. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Jesus has has given us. In other words, already been done. So he's given us spiritual blessings. So we're going to kind of explore what that is. I found out before we actually start reading Ephesians one and three. I found out that there's three positional, uh, three, yeah, three positions that God has given us as believers, and it's found in the book of Ephesians. So today we're just going to deal with one, and then I'll expose that what that is that position is as we get into the lesson. Let's read. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. It says, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says here in the third verse, which is our key verse, it says, Blessed be the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have, it says, that's past tense, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So here he's reminding them about our, our identity in Christ and the things that we have received through Christ, which is very, very important because again, um, as the Bible says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's hearing is having a knowledge of what the Bible says in, in, in terms of uh, not only what it says in terms of dispensational truth, but also in terms of the one in which brought salvation to you and I, which is through Jesus Christ. So here he says here that that the uh, blessings and the, and the praise and, and all this goes to the, what God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I said, he has blessed us and in the Amplified, he says blessed with every spiritual, every spiritual uh, blessings. Uh, in, in the heavenly realms. So the one thing that I want to point out today, remember I said there's three positions that we have in the book of Ephesians that reveals that spiritual blessings, what they are designed to do and knowing that, but what are those three positions? The first one we want to talk about is a very simple word and it's called sit, S-I-T, sit, sit. So I want to go to uh, Ephesians chapter number two and verse uh, Ephesians 2 and look at verse 4 through 6 and this is going to reveal one of the spiritual blessings not not one but many but it's going to we're going to um, look at this word sit s-i-t uh, is one of the positional positions of being spiritually blessed and we're going to look at what the scripture says about that it says here in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 4 it says but God who is rich in mercy and for his great love wherewith he loved us, it says, even when we were dead in sin, sins have, that's past tense, has quickened us together with Christ and by grace are ye saved. And then it goes, he had raised us up, it says here, to all uh, raised us together and made us sit. That's the word I want to look at, S-I-T, sit, sit. It says, hey, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So again, this one positional truth, which is good, referring to the spiritual blessing has to be us being seated somewhere. We're seated in heavenly places, it says here in Christ Jesus. So again, Christ has put us in a place of relationship 
that relationship is putting us in the place as we talked about that last week that the name jesus applies to his authority his character his rank his majesty and his power i talked about how that he is jesus is the heir and owner of uh, a law owner not only that it talks about how jesus is the great high priest he is the great high priest by offering himself to death and because of that has given us the he has the authority to cleanse us from our sins and remove us from our guilt but also to put us in right standing with god so because he is our great high priest so as we move a little bit further here's some things i like to bring out this is the first position that we're talking about of our spiritual blessing it's called sit s-i-t so we sit so this sit refers to uh, uh the ble spiritual blessings points to first of all to us being made alive through jesus christ and put back into fellowship and union through the blood of Jesus Christ. That is so powerful because it's not by works that we are in relationship with God. It's not by our works that we're in relationship with God. It's nothing that we can do humanly to, to solve the sin problem that brings us in relationship with God. It takes a, a, a sacrifice, and that sacrifice has to be according to God's requirement that requirement has to be to something that he provided and what he provided for us was a son and his son that son's name is jesus and as you and i know when we receive jesus amen what happens is we take on the benefits that he provided for us to put us in relationship with god so here prophetically we are seated in heavenly places in christ jesus so what that's simply saying prophetically what it's saying is that we our identity is tied to jesus it's not tied to you it's not tied to your heritage it's not tied to your birthright naturally it's tied to your spiritual birth and being born again puts us in the family of god and in relationship with god and therefore all that's done through through the blood of jesus the christ the son of the living god the other thing is that is another way we can say it that we now have received grace mercy and it's also favor so these are all spiritual blessings. Remember, these things we already have. You don't have to earn them. You have to learn how to receive them and then appropriate them in your life in everyday living. And that's important because sometimes we wake up in the morning having what we call guilty conscience when really we've already been forgiven. But do we have the faith to receive God's mercy through Jesus Christ? and take on his identity and not and lose our identity so we can move in the things that God has for us. So it's important as we as I said, so this spiritual blessings, it points to God's giving us mercy and that word mercy and not only mercy, but first of all it gives us grace. The grace is God's favor. Amen. Favor. So we know the grace. The Bible says the law came by uh, uh Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It's the grace of God. Remember in the Old Testament it talked about how uh, God looked upon the earth and man's imagination was all evil. And then God found the man by Noah, by the name of Noah. And, and it says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In other words, God favored him. This Not that he qualified for it, but God favored him because God has the authority to do that based upon, amen, him giving us that favor. Just as we don't have the authority to receive uh, the things that we need to receive outside of Jesus is that, that the grace that Jesus brought upon our lives puts us in position to receive, amen, what we're talking about here today is mercy. And everybody can stand some mercy, amen. Mercy something means that, amen, move from grace to mercy because God gives us grace through Jesus Christ. And now mercy, mercy means that we've been forgiven. It's nothing like to be not walking around with a guilty consciousness, but understanding that you've been forgiven and then put in a position to receive favor. I don't know about you, but favor is when God is working on your behalf. Uh, the favor of God uh, is so rich because, again, all these things are allocated to us when we believe. When I say believe, it's taken to the point of getting out of your head. In other words, get into your heart and then understand there's there in the instructions that come along with us receiving that favor that God has for us. So again, being saved or being delivered from judgment, because that's another spiritual blessing that God's given us. We've already been judged through Jesus Christ, amen, because what? When we've been received Jesus, we take on all the things that he's given us so we can be in right standing and right relationship with God. And because we're in right standing with relationship with God, it's not by works that any man should boast, but it's by the power of the blood that Jesus shed for us, being the high priest, offering himself as the, the sacrifice for you and I. 
and that sacrifice and by we accept him as our Lord and our Savior and we understand that now we have devoted our lives to him and and now we're going to take on his life and lose our life now we're standing in his authority his anointing and therefore the spiritual blessings flow out of that understanding and out of that relationship other thing is salvation comes to us through the through a person and salvation is not just a one-time event salvation is a prophetic uh, 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 mandate that god's put on us because uh, salvation means uh the healing of our bodies uh, you know, salvation always also means amen um uh, the preserving of our mindsets and and not only that but also it's protections wrapped in that provision is wrapped up in that salvation amen is a relationship it's not so much something an act or something that's done god has given us salvation that salvation came through jesus christ so salvation comes to us through the person and that person's name as we know is jesus it's through him that we receive now what we call kingdom covenant promises i kind of god just kind of gave me that because if that flows through the scriptures when you're reading them a lot is that god's given us kingdom covenant promises so paul in the book of ephesians he's trying to educate them in terms of what they have received through jesus christ because jesus because of his death burial and resurrection he has granted us spiritual blessings and the spiritual blessings has to deal with receiving grace receiving mercy and also receiving forgiveness that we just talked about also it takes us to another thing a uh, point is and that's it's a great point is that um now i'm gonna make a statement but please stay with me uh, now, what I want to say is that the kingdom covenant promises, a lot of times people, uh, they have faith for going to heaven, but they don't have faith for receiving all that God's given us through Jesus Christ now and when we get to heaven. So that's a two point, uh, uh, not two point, but that's something to kind of really ask yourself, do you have faith for it? But really, you can't have faith for something if you don't know it exists. Uh, because you have to have a word of faith. So the word of faith gives you the belief to believe for something that's not really visibly manifested. But here in the scripture, when we look at this today, and when I said kingdom coming to promises, I want to give you some, some reference to this. And it's in the Bible. And what we need to know is what the Bible says about the promises of God. So again, if you just go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 20. In 2 Corinthians and chapter number 1, and verse number 20 is where we're going to want to go. We want to go there. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 20. That's where we want to go right now. Okay. So 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 20. And um, I'm going to read this out of the, um, I'm going to read this out of the King James first, and then I'll go to the Amplified. Now, I'm making this point because uh, the Bible said, how can they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach except they be sent? So preaching builds your belief system in something outside of what you haven't heard, but also it informs you about in terms of what the Bible says, what God says about you. And then you have to have uh, enough uh, belief to believe it to the degree that you accept it, you receive it, and now you're looking for that thing to be manifested in your life. Now, it says here in uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of he, of God in him are yea, and in him are amen, and glory to God by us. Remember, Jesus has given us spiritual blessings, so the spiritual blessings are tied to the promises, are tied to the promises, are tied to the promises. Now, I said that for a reason, because remember I said that some people believe, have enough faith just to believe that some things that God has promised us does not activate till we get to heaven. That's not tr necessarily true. There are some things that won't be activated till we get to heaven, but there's some things that need to be activated now, and you have to have faith for it. You have to believe it. You have to expect it. You have to have a confession for it. Then you got to have obedience if it's tied to it to search it out exactly what it is that God's requiring from you. And then from that, you got to have patience so God can manifest what he desires to do in and through you by way of his word and also his spirit through Jesus Christ. Now, it says here, for all the promises, in Amplified, it says, for as many are as the promises of God, they find, they all find their yes in him. And then it says, in Christ, in Christ. And it says, for this reason, we all also utter, amen, so be it. And God, through him, who through Jesus, he is, 
He is his, in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. So in other words, the agency, listen, the person is Jesus, number one. The agency is called the kingdom of God, number two. And it's out of the kingdom of God that he begins to give us these promises because they're tied to Jesus through the agency of the kingdom of God. Remember when Jesus uh, told his disciples, or uh, his disciples came to Jesus and asked him, teach us to pray as John has taught his disciples. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it's already been heaven. Now, so remember, it says in earth as it's already been, so it's already been done in heaven, but now it needs to be what conveyed from heaven to earth. And the one that brought it to earth was Jesus. Jesus brought it to earth in terms of modeling, amen, the kingdom of God. And because of that, you can see the promises being unveiled. People were healed. People were delivered. Uh, when people needed food, he provided food for them. If they needed protection, they got protection. All this came forth out of Jesus' ministry. When you look at the anointing that was on his life and the anointing that now comes out of the kingdom of God, how does it come out of the kingdom of God? Because the anointing is on Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the Christ in the Christo. And because he's the Christ in the Christo and the agency that he's now broadcasting that information through is called the kingdom of God. So when he meets Nicodemus, when Nicodemus said, we know that thou man that come from God, nobody can do these miracles except God be with him. Then he didn't understand that J Jesus is modeling the father's will here on the earth. And God's will was for him to turn things around into the original format that he started at the beginning. That God created man never to have relationship with himself alone, but to have relationship with God being his father. So again, Jesus is restoring that, bringing us back. And therefore, he puts us in a place once we receive him, as we have read before, that we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, there is a heavenly prophetic counsel, a heavenly prophetic word that holds you and I in. And out of that comes promises that God has for us. Now, I can't say that enough because sometimes when you don't have the mindset to receive the promises or you don't know what they are, then you're trying to work your own provisions to take care of your own self. And it's never been designed to do that. Do that. It's never been designed to be set up that way because God wants to help us through life. He doesn't want you to do it on your own, but he wants to help you do it. I like that. I like that. God wants to help you do it. I should get a t-shirt that says, God wants to help you do it. <laughs> because a lot of times we're trying to do it without God because we don't understand that God is all fascinated in terms of our life. Jesus said, I come that you may have what life and have it more abundantly. Now, I said that as a question, is it something, is that um, now we have to establish faith for it and a faith for these things. In other words, once you come into knowledge of what we're talking about, is, is that you don't have to wait to receive some promises. When you get to heaven, there's some promises that God has for us right now. The other scripture I want to go to 1 Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy, if you would. And we're going to look at 1 Timothy 4 and 8. This is another scripture that uh, if you heard me a lot or heard me minister uh, quite often, I refer to this a lot because remember, uh, uh, the word of God is there to help us understand God's ways and how he He, he applies uh information that excuse me that would help us amen put us in position to move forwardly in life with him helping us remember him helping us because part of the spiritual blessings has to do with what god has done for us through jesus christ not only when we get to heaven because it is in heaven but here also is here in earth now first uh timothy chapter number four verse number eight I got two versions here. I'm going to read the Amplify, uh, King James first. This is for bodily exercise, prophet little. This is 1 Timothy 4 and 8. It says, for bodily exercise, prophet little, but godliness is profitable to all things, all things, and having the promises of life. Oh, my God. Do you hear that? Not the promises of heaven, but the promises of life. The promises of life. Jesus said, I come to you, have life. Well, that life is, has to deal with heaven and earth heaven and earth. So here it says here, it says here, uh, it says the promise of that now is. So when you see that word now, remember faith is not tomorrow, faith is now. Faith is not in the by and by, but faith is now. Now faith what is. So your faith has to come where God's word is because the word of faith will put you in position to see things the way God has designed for you to see them 
and get the comprehension right in terms of your understanding and then how to actually take it and make ownership of it and for it to be yourself, for you, for you. When it's for you, can nobody take it from you, okay? So again, it says here, it says, for having the promise of this life, the life now and that which is to come. Now it talks about the earthly living, which is now, then and now which is to come is when we go to heaven. So now we got earth, and heaven. Remember the prayer that Jesus prayed? Father, that thy kingdom, no, when he told his disciples to pray, when you pray, our Father who are in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in what earth as is already done in heaven. Here we have it right here. We have it right here. When he says the life that now is, that's earth. When he says, and that which is to come, that's what? That's heaven. So here, again, but you have to see what they're simply saying here, that there's promises that's given us now as we live in the earth and there's promises when we go to heaven. Oh, glory to God. Did y'all hear that? See, but you have to understand that. And, and remember, most people have been so uh, heavenly minded that they're no earthly. They can't benefit from the things that God has for us earthly because we don't have faith for it. And the faith has to deal with your confession. As we said before, our faith, God's faith is his word. Our faith has to deal with his confession, our confession, our obedience, and also our, our confession. So we have a confession, we have an obedience. I'm missing one. Confession, obedience, and I can't, I, it'll come to me. But first of all, some of you heard it before, but you know what I'm talking about. So again, God's faith starts with a promise. Our faith starts with what? Our confession, our obedience, and it still hasn't came back to me. It will before that we get done. So again, you can see where we're talking about that. So again, God is trying to teach us. Now, in the next verse, it says here in the Amplified, it says here, for physical training is of some value, useful for a little. But godliness and spiritual training is useful for and valuable in everything, in everything now, and in every way, and it holds the promises of the present life. I can't say that enough. The present life. You have to have faith for it. Faith for what God has promised us in this present life and also that which is to come. So again, this is important because where we're going with this is that so many people believe they have faith for what's going to take place in heaven, but we have to have faith for what God's going to do in the present here in the earth. And some of the things that God, these are all spiritual blessings, and they come from us being seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because of our position and being in Christ made us available to receive these things. And we don't have to earn them. They're there. We have to discover what they are and then apply them into our life, whether it's spiritually, naturally, physically, financially, emotionally. You heard me say that a lot because a lot of times we, we don't identify those things as being practical and uh, uh, available even to us today because we don't have faith for it. And whatever we don't have faith for, God can't make the exchange because the exchange is done from our faith to his faith. Remember when Jesus healed people, the first thing he did, he, I'm carrying everything that they have through the agency of the kingdom of God to th those who are in need in the earth. But the first thing he asked them, he said, are, do you believe I'm able to do this? He was asking them, do you have faith for it? Do you believe I can do it? Not only that, but can you confess with your heart that I can do it and give me permission to move in it? And then therefore the manifestation will take place. Listen, in Hebrews chapter number four and verses 14 through 16, in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, let's go there for a minute. And I'm hoping you're getting something out of this. Ephesians chapter number four, and we're going to go to verse number uh, 14. Ephesians 4 and 14 is where we want to go. Remember, we talked and made the statement about that Jesus has given us spiritual blessings. The reason why he can do that, because he was our great high priest. And here it says here in Ephesians 4, I mean, not Ephesians, but Hebrews chapter number 4, Hebrews 4 and 14, it says here, seeing then that we have a great high priest, was his name? Jesus. Jesus is the high priest. Listen, that passed into heaven. Remember, on the it says here, passed into heaven, and Jesus, the Son of God, it said, let us hold fast our profession. That word profession is another word for the word confession, 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 confession. And that's important. We'll come back to that in a minute because a lot of times you can tell if you have faith for it, you have a word, a word of faith, and it comes out of the Bible, it's in your heart, and it gets in your mouth. It gets in your mouth. When it gets in your mouth, you begin to say what God says. You don't say what you see, but you say what God says. 
So here it says, let's go a little bit further. For we have not had a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but which was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Then it goes, it says, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. So remember, one of those spiritual blessings that God's given us is grace. So the grace, the grace of God, amen. God's riches working at Christ's expense. In other words, him moving on our behalf in the unseen realm where we can't really understand what's going on. He's already got that covered. Now I like this because again, the, this is reminding us that our faith has to be what? In, in alignment with, uh, with God's word. And then we have to be in a position to uh, uh, confession, obedience, and also patience. God, is, we have to have patience. Now, notice what it says here, seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into what? Heavens. So Jesus, when he, 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 he is in heaven right now, people act like he's not, he didn't even exist, but he does. He lives in heaven right now. And not only that, but he's overseeing those things concerning you and I, according to the promises that have been made available to us as we go through this time that we're in even right now. So remember that the word of faith has told us that through Jesus Christ, we are placed in a heavenly position that's sit, we're seated in heavenly places and that we have received grace, we have received mercy and favor that needs to be working for us each and every day. But you gotta have faith for it, you gotta believe you got to believe, and I'm not talking about wishful believing. I'm talking about getting something concrete concerning what God's word says that he wants to do for you and I. Remember, God's grace has to deal with God giving us what? Mercy, and not only that, but giving us what we call favor. The favor of God is, is a powerful piece because right now, I'm, I know that we're being tested uh, as believers more now than ever, and the test is always the test of our faith. It's not, uh, we're not being tested any, any other way because the test of our faith has to deal with us. Uh, where is your confession? Uh, uh, where is your obedience? You know, because your confession and your obedience is, is where God is going to uh, really challenge us because if you say you really believe, then you're going to confess what God says about you, not what you see. And I think that's very, very important. So this word sit in the Amplified, it talks about what we just read here in the 14th verse. It talks about Jesus is the great high priest. Why is he the great high priest? Remember, in the Old Testament, the priest had to offer up an offering each and every year for the people's sins. And even then, it didn't it cleanse them from the uh, Adam's sin nature that was inside of them. It covered their sins. My God. When Jesus came, I mean, he is the great high priest. And not only that, but he went... And he went to the holies of holies for us, which is back to heaven. Not only that, but when he went back, he went back as a living sacrifice, was resurrected from the dead. Not only that, but he was in position now, amen, to, uh, to bring us to a place of relationship because he not only just offered his body and his blood, he put us in position that never again that, that we need to have another sacrifice. He is the ultimate sacrifice that puts us back in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that relationship now puts us in a point, a place of entitlement. You need to write that down boldly, entitlement. You've been entitled to receive, amen, an inheritance. And that inheritance is spiritual. And it's a spiritual inheritance that's been descriptive through the scripture in New Testament. As we seek out the word and study it, we'll find out what it says about how we need to position ourselves to receive help through life now and then when we get to heaven. Ain't nothing like having some help. I'm telling you, amen. Ain't nothing like having, having some help. And sometime in America, we've been taught that we can do it all by ourselves. And individually, we think we can do it all by ourselves. But you listen, Jesus said this one thing you can't do. You can't provide salvation by yourself. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ because he is the ultimate sacrifice that puts us back in relationship with God. And when we're back in relationship with God, now we're entitled to receive. And what we receive is spiritual promises, kingdom covenant promises that are made available for you and I now. And then the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. In other words, we don't actually go literally through the, through the, through the, uh, through the, through the, uh, uh, throne, how we go to the throne is through prayer. We go through the throne through prayer. And the prayer is, remember, we have the right to use the name and name is access 
to get to God the Father and the spiritual part of God in terms of this coming before him and asking him for the things that we need. And God says that, that when we ask, we ask in a place of faith and also humility, knowing that he's going to move on our behalf. So I'm just giving you this word today to encourage you because I just, I know there's more I want to give you concerning the other positions that we have. But the one we want to talk about today was the word sit, S-I-T. So again, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that the Bible says here, you got to have faith to go before God, to go to God. You have to go in prayer and you can't lose this, this, this mindset of not looking to God because he wants to help us, but God can't help us unless we give him permission. And how we give him permission is when we ask. When we ask, we're in a place of submission. We're in a place of submission and now in a place of humility. And now we're in a place uh, uh, of understanding that because of that, I don't have to try to do it on my own. He's going to help me. He's going to help you. He's going to help our children. He's going to help our teenagers. Amen. He's going to help. He'll help anyone who's in a position to understand that prayer is not work. Prayer is a privilege, and we get a chance to pray. One of the things that should be heightened in your life, even now during the time of this pandemic, is that you know what you should be. Your prayer life should want on another level because you shouldn't have a lot of distractions because a lot of you don't have to go to work. You are working from home and you got certain benefits from that when you work at home. What am I simply saying? The Bible tells us is let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy, find grace to help in a time of need. Now, I don't know what you may need today, but I want you to know that you are not alone, number one. Number two, I don't care what you see, what you think, and what you feel, because the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. And God has a plan for you and I, and that plan is called fellowship. And out of the fellowship, we're going to have what? Relationship. And how we establish the relationship, we get, one, we get a chance to pray. We get a chance to call on the name of the Lord. We get a chance to ask him according to the kingdom come the promise of his word and say, you Lord God, this is not your will for my life for me to struggle. So therefore, I'm going to position myself each and every day to ask you for some help. And when I ask according to your word, according to faith, that you're going to move on my behalf. And then I'm going to leave up out of prayer and have that confession in my, uh, that confession. And the confession simply says, you know what? God's going to help me. Amen. He's going to help me. He's going to help you. And is that a lie? No, that's the truth. Because God wants to help those who seek him and call upon him early or call upon him in the afternoon or call him late in the evening. God wants to help you just like he wants to help me. And I'm here to tell you today, you know what? God is moving upon those who realize this fact and understand that Jesus has given us spiritual blessings and we're sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And now we've been empowered with entitlement to receive as we understand the word of faith, how it's applied to our life daily. And now because of fellowship, fellowship in relationship with Jesus Christ that brought us into union because of his blood, we have a right to succeed. We have a right to thrive. We have the right to overcome. We have the right to throw down and to build up. We got a right to bind and to loose. We got a right, amen, to lay hands and people are healed and sick. We got the right. We got the right. We have the right. So, so, so listen, don't get stuck down and not understanding, well, amen, that we've been given something and it's for you to receive it and you have to have faith for it. You have to believe God that his word is true. You got to believe also, amen, that he's required for you to do something with that word and then expect something beyond what you see, what you feel, what you think, and also, also what people are saying. This is not the end. This is the beginning, the beginning of your faith growing to another level because of the spiritual blessings that God has put down in our lives for us to receive, not only now, but also when we get to heaven. And right now, I'm trying to work it to the degree that I understand that there's some things to give me on, in the by and by, but there's some things I need right now. And I say that a lot because why? Because people sometimes don't have a faith for it. They think it doesn't exist. They think they got to wait till they die to receive what God has for them. When Jesus said, no, I came that you may have life now. And also, and when, listen, now and not only now, but also later. And then when I say later is when we leave and depart this earth in the heavenly realms of being in him and not being strapped by this physical body that we're in right now. So I want you to be blessed and highly favored. 
I want you to know that God is moving on your behalf. We only talked about this one position. There's two more, and this is going to be a series. So I'm going to pick up next week talking about the next position, spiritual blessing that we have. He has for us that's found out of the book of Ephesians. But I want you to know and, and that you have to understand that you are not alone. You've been entitled to receive spiritual blessings that have been activated and they're waiting for you to receive but you got to have faith for it and believe that, number one, you're in fellowship with Christ. And because of that fellowship, he's going to help you. And how many of you know we all need some help? So right now, God has help for you and I. But do you have faith for it? Do you have the confession? Do you have the obedience for it? Faith, confession, and obedience. And our faith is when we believe our confession and then our obedience. So we have to have faith for the Bible said the trials of your faith. So sometimes God is not on trial. We're on trial. Where's your faith? Where's your belief? Do you believe? If you believe, then you know what? Then you're going to operate in a place of confession and also obedience to his word. So be blessed and highly favored. I'm here. I'm expecting God to do some great things. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's working in our life. And that power that we're talking about today has to deal with the blood of Jesus Christ, putting us in right standing with God. And because we're in right standing with God, he is the author, amen, to give us those spiritual blessings because all the promises in him are yea and amen. And I'm here to tell you, you need to understand that you know what? You're not alone. Quit thinking that you're alone. Quit thinking you got to make it by yourself. No, ask daddy, Abba daddy, ask Jesus on behalf of God the Father and he will help you, amen, give you the strength that you need in order to endure and to overcome because you've been entitled, I can't say that enough, entitlement through the blood of Jesus Christ, our great high priest, and you have the authority to overcome any problem, any situation, through him, it can be done. Without him, it won't be done. Through him, it can be done. Without him, it can't be done. Through him, it will be done. Without him, it can't be done. So another, you have to build your faith for that. Understand, I ain't walking by myself. I'm walking in covenant. I'm walking, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Glory to God. That's my confession, amen. I'm a kingdom citizen. And out of the agency of the kingdom of God, he's going to provide the provisions and the peace and the protection that we need. Everything you need. And then he's going to instruct us out of having information and instructions that ties us to obedience so we don't get outside of God's will concerning what he has for our life. And even if we declare what he has for us and it hasn't manifested in this earthly realm, we know that he's still going to reward us. Because why? The Bible says some died in faith, not receiving a promise, but yet when they receive Jesus, it's everything you need in that life that he has for us when we leave this earthly realm. So again, I want you to be blessed. I want you to be highly favored. I want you to know that you, you know God is moving on your behalf, even if it doesn't look like it. And the Bible says with faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. So today we've been talking about Jesus has given us spiritual blessings and all the blessings on him are yea and amen. So I hope you got something out of the word of faith today. I love you guys. I'm going to pray in just a minute. I want you to get your faith level up. Amen. Where is your faith? The trials of your faith. In other words, do you believe? Do you believe according to the scripture? Do you believe that God, what he says to you is true? Do you believe that he has the power to bring that thing to pass in your life? And number three, do you have the patience to endure until he begins to allow those things to come forth in what we call manifesting? So let's pray. And I want to ask those today, if you're listening for the first time, if you never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, and you never really, we're not talking about going to church. We're talking about making a life change a life change. I think I was 25 when I came to the decision, I need to have a life change. I need my life change. And when I heard the message that Jesus said he came that you may have life and have it more abundantly, I want to discover what that meant. And I, I, I said, I want uh, to hear the word of God. And, and the word of God pricked in my heart. And I knew that, that, that Jesus is my substitute for my new life. And I had to accept him and understand that I had to give up my old life to have a new life. 
I was okay with that because it wasn't working for me. So I know sometimes it's not working for you and got tired of pretending. So if there's somebody out there for the first time, if you never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life and God has touched your heart and you know that you've been looking for answers, you've been trying to look for your destiny and your purpose, this is the time for you to stop and pause for a minute and realize that Jesus is the Son of God and he died on a cross called, on a hill called Calvary, on a cross for you that you can come and accept him as your your Lord and your Savior, and then he will save you from yourself and give you the information that you need in order to have a new life. So if you never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, I want to pray with you now and lead you into what we call the prayer uh, of salvation. And that prayer of salvation is when you have to admit that, well, number one, that you're a sinner, number two, that you're tired of your old life, and number three, that you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. So we want to pray this prayer with you. We want to repent today. And repent means to stop what you're doing, turn around, do something different. So, Lord, I pray even now in Jesus' name. And I want you to pray with me if you're listening and you're ready to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's a simple prayer. It gets you started on the right path. It's just you acknowledging it. So even now, Father, we pray and repeat at me. So, Lord, I thank you today for this word of faith. I understand that Jesus is my Savior. He died for the sins of the world. And I repent of my sins and I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I welcome him into my heart and I ask Jesus that you be Lord over my life as I submit myself unto you this day in Jesus' name. See, it's just that simple. And if you pray that prayer, I want you to uh, go to our website, www.kficc.com. And I want you to send me an a, a email to let me know that you've done this. And then there's some information i like to give you that will help you uh, to further your relationship and understand it even more. There's a book that I even like to give you, and it's for free. It won't cost you anything. The other thing is that if you've been walking, you've backslidden or you're not walking in alignment where God is, where it is, you've walked away from God, and then you know if you walked away from God, you can walk back to God. So that's what you need to do now. You need to just understand that if you're ready to turn around because you used to walk with God, but now you're out of relationship and you want to walk back in relation with God, it's very simple. It's just a prayer that you can pray. You can just pray this prayer with me now. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name that you forgive me from walking away from you. I ask that you help me to turn back to you in such a way that I'll be more, more fervent and on fire and that you will recommit my life even now in a way that I can be acceptable in receiving you as my Lord and Savior once again and walking in that relationship and make it real. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So again, just contact me again, if you would, as some information I'd like to give you also. Listen, did you know the message today was talking about Jesus has given us spiritual blessings? Did you know that we receive grace, mercy, and favor? And you know what? He wants it working on your behalf. So you got to have faith for it. So your faith, your confession, and your obedience, it needs to be in operation. So again, we thank you guys. Don't forget to go to the website, www.kficc.com, www.kficc.com. And don't forget to sow your seed. Sow your appreciation from hearing the word. Don't just eat the word and then don't leave. Uh, 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 appreciation and appreciation is your donation so please take the time to do that we appreciate that we love you guys me and pastor Teresa we send love to you so let's pray and end this broadcast and hopefully we'll we'll see you and talk to you soon and again we're going to be picking this up next week that Jesus has given us spiritual blessings let's pray father we thank you for all that you've allowed us to do today through the word of faith to remind us that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God and when we hear the word of God is designed to make our lives better, it's even designed to help encourage and strengthen our faith to, to believe in something other than ourselves and put us in a position to receive the word that we can now get victory over the opposition that's trying to face us in this life that we're even now navigating through. So Lord, continue to keep your hand upon us, bless us, encourage us, uh, remove things uh, out of our life that is not your will. We want your will to be done and not our own. And we pray that you would execute your will as we come to the throne of grace and ask for mercy and help in the time of need. Now, Lord, we thank you. We send blessings out to those who are listening and that you would heal them, deliver them, set them free, give them the grace that they need to be a powerful witness to others. And these things we pray and ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we love you, Father, and thank you for our time. In Jesus' name, amen. So be blessed and highly favored, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.